Today's video was not sponsored by Lego, sadly. Besides Star Wars figures and models, I also really, really like Lego, uh, preferably Star Wars. So I thought, what Lego related content could I possibly make? Today, we're gonna make our very own Lego Star Wars box art. Let's get into it. The challenge for today, make some new box art for this X-Wing model. Not because I don't like the original, but just because it's the only set I had laying around, which I think has the most potential. Now, first off, to take on a project like this, we need to do some research. Lego Star Wars has had a ton of different looks and styles over time. Some of them I absolutely love and others aren't really my taste personally. But overall, I think they look great and we have to figure out what they all have in common. All Lego Star Wars sets have, well, the Lego and the Star Wars logo on them, what a surprise. On top, there's always some sort of banner image. The new sets went with more of a corner there, but I like the banner idea a lot. On the left, we have info about the set in question. Down below on the right, there's the minifigures included, the Disney logo down there, and well, in the middle, the model itself, often in a nice but subtle background. The model itself, of course, has to stand out. You can't go too crazy with the detail in the background. To this day, I'm still not really sure if they're photos or renders, the obvious thing I guess would be renders, but if you really think about it, it could totally be either. I personally think that some fan-made renders look a bit flat and a bit fake, and LEGO ones are often very crisp and really, really realistic. For that reason, we're gonna take some photos because I'm not a 3D artist anyway. Let's go and take our X-Wing to the studio. I set up a bunch of lights around this stool, all pretty close to the fighter so we get some nice harsh crisp highlights. I shot some pictures and tried getting a nice and dynamic angle. I also had to make sure to minimize the depth of field so it's all nice and clear throughout. Out of a number of shots I took, I chose this one for the front of the box and this one for the back side. That comes later though, let's first drop this in camera roll and clean it up just a little bit. First off, I made it a bit brighter and added some sharpening and clarity. I then used noise reduction to make it really nice and smooth looking. And that actually worked really, really well. I moved it into Photoshop and started masking it out. I used a pencil to get the most accurate and sharp cutout. Now that already looks pretty good, but we're not quite there yet. These supposed to be colorless colors still have this yellow tint in them, which we have to neutralize. Basically, we just have to bring them back to true grayscale. I then also added some extra highlights to make them pop a little bit more. With a final camera raw filter, I added even more clarity and texture to really bring out these smaller details. This is super important. I found it makes it look very legitimate. Um, then now, let's move on to the next step. Before we can really move on, we first need a basic template, so to speak, for the box. I made a new document and added the first two logos in the right corner since we found out that's a rule. Then the X-Wing. I imagined some of the other elements that would be added later and tried fitting it in there nicely. These rectangles angles are gonna be the base elements for later and the last little thing for now the Disney logo down below. We are now able to start thinking about our banner image. There have been so many different ones in the past, I thought maybe it's a fun idea to kind of combine elements from old designs to create this kind of nostalgic effect. I'm starting with the color theme from the 2013 run. I simply loved the way those looked. The green just pops a lot. The 2011 sets had these clouds, which I like, so those I'm gonna implement as well. And what always stood out to me was the rounded kind of banner shape of the solo sets. So that I'm gonna use for sure. I definitely wanna have a single character in the corner there, like so many did before. I'm personally just not really a big fan of the Lego characters, so let's go for the painty, realistic version instead. Ryan Valley actually allowed me to use this image, which I think will look just amazing in the corner there, so... You know, let's not waste time, get into it. Like I mentioned before, clouds. I used these ones I have here to create some nice cloud shapes by chopping off pieces and kind of puzzling my way out. I quickly put in the logos and the X-Wing to see what those would end up covering up. And then in the right corner, I put the cut out Luke photo after which I finished the clouds behind him. Now using a color gradient, I added a green color to the clouds. I adjusted the lighting on Luke a little bit to match this green vibe we've got going on. Basically my usual highlight technique. With a bit of glow, I finished lightsaber and even added some of that around the clouds to make them look a tad hazy. Finally, I finished it off with a bunch of subtle sparks, which also I made green. On the left, I thought it'd be cool to have it fade out to black 
or well space actually i dropped some stars in there and i actually really liked where this was going so far after some quick adjustments i called it good so now it's time to add this to our final box art file as i mentioned earlier i wanted that curved banner instead so i drew that shape and clipped our header image in there this looks quite sleek already but i did want to have that green edge similarly to how the solo sets had that edge using layer styles i added a bevel to add some detail and this is where it started looking pretty sweet i think so far the comp still looked pretty balanced out so that was definitely a good thing now let's go and spice up the logo here i recreated the same style lego has done a few times before i just think it looks really good on box art so i just had to include it essentially adding a solid stroke behind it with a thin line around and in the center a subtle gradient like this it is super simple but i think really cool looking next the sets information i figured helvetica looks the most similar to the font lego uses so i wrote the correct text on there luke skywalker's x-wing fighter with a set number and everything i don't know why but making these things look legitimate like that using these small details is just so much fun it's just really lovely to see it all come together like that the minifigures these i did grab from google i put them in and started working on the frame they're sitting in these are always in style with the rest of the box so that's super important to keep in mind i went for a rather basic gray backdrop and some glow behind them to make sure they stand out i decided to go with a similar edge as i did on the banner image to keep it all nice and consistent it is simple yet very effective and that's the thing for marketing purposes you don't want to go too crazy it has to translate the product correctly at the end of the day now the final step as far as the front of the box goes the actual artwork behind the model this has to be very subtle in order for it to work now in most of the other x-wing box art the x-wing is located in the death star trench which uh, makes the most sense of course but i do want to do something a little bit different let's go with space instead and add yevin 4 or yevin prime or anything like that first i dropped in the two planets in a similar position as they appear in the movie before making those look decent i added some thruster fire to the engines i made them look the correct color and brightened them up just a tiny bit some glow also works great to make them pop and i finished those off with uh, some tiny sparks in the background i slid in some stars and now i started working on the planets it's mostly color correction and adding glow and haze now as soon as i overlaid the rest of the box it just looked off to me it's just a bit chaotic just a bit too much or something i'd fix that later though because first i wanted to add the flying spring-loaded shooter dart like so many other sets have as well with motion blur and simple streaks i was able to make it fast as hell for a tiny detail i put in some little tie fighters in the background otherwise it seemed a bit too quiet and empty and last but not least some green laser bolts catching up with the fighter always fun for some reason i thought another green line down there could be fun and actually that ended up looking just fine i added the same clouds to that of course and this is where i realized that red planet that's not gonna work it's too bright too vibrant too much and it takes away from the subject the x-wing instead i made yevin 4 much larger and got rid of prime completely this looks a lot better to me the balance is back and the focus isn't really being taken away from the x-wing i also added some motion blur in the back by the way small detail and that means the front of the box is pretty much finished the back of the box is very self-explanatory i used this photo i took and did the exact same thing here again the configuration of things on the back is a tad different but it comes down to the exact same kind of stuff i took some of these detail pictures from the original box along with a link here and the skywalker saga sticker now the figures are missing though so i shot another picture of them i cut them out and put them in there i'm surprised this worked because i actually completely guessed the camera angle and it's pr it's pretty accurate actually the background there is just a blurred hanger image by the Way, similarly to i think the original box then the sides it's really mainly just text a lot of text on the left side i did make sure that line overlaps on there which is kind of satisfying actually and with all the pieces complete let's go and put this box together Working on this project for some reason has been the most fun in editing I've had in a long time. I can't explain why, but seeing everything come together is just the absolute best. And of course, there's also the fact that I really love Lego and like putting my passion into it. So there you have it. Maybe next time it's a good idea to choose a ground vehicle so we can do some more landscape stuff. Could be fun. Or, you know, collaborate with a Lego builder to make a completely new original set, which would be pretty cool as well. The point is, I am very happy with the result. If you like this video, make very sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss a single, single future upload. And then I hope I'll see you in my next video.